Alright, what's happening y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores and it's official. Chase Young and three others have been placed on the pub list. I'm going to tell y'all why you should not panic. I'm going to also break down exactly what the pub list is. Not only what it stands for, the PUP, because it is an acronym, but also what it means. When can those guys come back? Do they count towards a 90-man roster? If they were to stay on the pub list going into the regular season, how many games would they be forced to miss? And will they count against the 53-man roster? Because I know there's a lot of people out there that are still kind of confused about the pub list. And even I wasn't 100% informed on it until I really just went and did some research so they know the ins and outs of exactly what the pub list is. So I felt like I might as well just go ahead and share that knowledge with y'all as well. Also, who will be the guys that replace those starters in camp? Because everybody except for one person is a projected starter, and the guy that's not a starter is the direct backup to one of the starters. Two of our centers are in the pub list. So who will be the guy that starts in place of those guys in camp? And until those guys return, even if it goes into the regular season. And then we got to talk about all of the team stuff going on, like them trademark and command force and for what reason. And then, of course, this big fight song update. And then... A lot more. This is a Rico report, so we got to talk about Madden ratings. We got to talk about everything that's gone down within the past week. And before we dive into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, make sure y'all pull up every week to the Friday night live stream, 7 to 9 p.m., where we talk about everything under the sun. And every Sunday, where I do my live stream with the call in, so you can call in, let your voice be heard, ask any questions you have give any observations you have now the training camp is kicking off and practices officially start tomorrow we'll have a lot to talk about so make sure y'all pull up for those and without further ado let's get it All right, so first of all, defensive end Chase Young, tight end Logan Thomas, and centers, two of them, Chase Roulier and Tyler Larson have all been placed on the pup list. Also, tackle Cornelius Lucas was placed on the active non-football injury list, which I think is really interesting because that's going to pave a way for Sadiq Charles to potentially get a lot of snaps in training camp. Granted, Cornelius Lucas was never the starter. He's the backup swing tackle. So does that mean Sadiq Charles is now the backup swing tackle that's going to get a lot of looks? We'll see. And before we dive into who's going to get a lot of the snaps with those other four guys on the pup list currently being gone and not practicing, I first wanted to let y'all know that we do not have to panic. I mean, Mike Garofalo just talked about how Chase Young and Logan Thomas have made significant progress, and this is more of a precaution than any. Thing. And then also the Draft Network and a few other reporters actually said that they expect Chase Young to be ready by week one and think it's actually a pretty good chance that he is. And in my opinion, out of all of the guys placed on the pup list, I felt like Chase Young would be the last to return. And if anything, I feel like Chase Roulier may be back the soonest. And if they feel like Chase Young may be back by week one, and he's the one who I felt like will be out the longest, I think that's pretty good news. There is a nice chance that we will have all of these guys by week one. But like I've already talked about in my previous video, which technically I did yesterday slash last night, but by the time it finished uploading and everything was done with it, it was technically early this morning. But I talked about, oh wow, Julio Jones just signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh my lord, man. Even if he isn't what he used to be, that's still kind of scary. I ain't gonna lie. If he's healthy enough to play, I'm scared. And Chris Godwin just got cleared for camp. Oh no. I wouldn't rush anybody. Again, I want to keep emphasizing there's no such thing as easy games in the NFL, especially for a team like us that, first of all, has a long history of playing well against good teams and playing poorly against bad teams. And no matter what, our games are usually close, except for like the past couple of years. And even then, we aren't elite enough for us to just automatically write a W on any game on the calendar. And I do feel like the Jaguars and the Lions have sneaky talent on their teams. But still, if there were any two games on the season, maybe you add a third one in the Chicago Bears, but that's later on, so that doesn't really affect the situation. But if there were a time for Chase Young and all of these other guys to just take a couple of more weeks to make sure that their injuries are perfectly fine and we're not risking making their injuries worse by bringing them back too soon, it would be against the Jaguars and the Lions where I'd be perfectly fine with those guys sitting out if they have to i prefer to have them back but if they have to miss time 
that'll be okay and i already talked about this in my previous video as well but with all of these guys out on the pub list who will be their replacements first of all throughout training camp throughout preseason getting all of the snaps all of the really meaningful snaps i mean these are important snaps not only to younger guys and rookies but even the veterans kind of like the situation where we prefer to have terry mccloin there at mandatory mini camps and otas and things like that but because he wasn't Jahan dawson was able to get more looks he was able to go against the better corners of our defense and practice against those guys and i feel like he's better because of it and i also feel like we'll have something similar here but at the same time you prefer your starters to get as many offseason snaps as possible so that when they come back they aren't just running into a brick wall of nfl contact they're not prepared for it which is also putting their injuries at more risk that's why there's a ramp up period and you hope by the time the regular season gets here that you're ready for full-blown nfl contact and that's for everybody even the guys that are fully healthy throughout the entire offseason let alone the guys that are coming back right before the season starts or sometime during the season i really worry about those guys but who will be the guys that get a lot of the snaps throughout this offseason and even potentially going into the regular season if chase young has to miss a game or two or even more than that who's going to be the defensive end that starts in his place in my opinion if i had to pick two guys i would think it'd be casey two hill or James Smith Williams, but Daniel Wise and Boomi Rutimi also make strong cases. And when it comes to the two centers, again, our starting center and our backup center are both out so far on the pub list. So Wes Swicer is your obvious replacement there, but with him being such a great backup swing, interior offense lineman, guard center, whatever, with him starting at center until further notice, that means some of these other guys are going to be able to step up and be those backup guards and are now with the second team rather than the third team. Because if everybody's fully healthy, Wes Weiss is technically a backup. But now that he's your starting center, first of all, who's your backup center to him? I'm guessing Keith Ishmael. So now Keith Ishmael goes from like fourth string kind of maybe at best third string center to now direct backup center throughout the entire offseason until those guys return and maybe john toth i believe is behind keith ishmael now he's the third string center he went from fringe roster bubble to now he's third string center throughout the offseason till those guys return back healthy but this also paves the way for like a sadiq charles who like i talked about earlier is technically the backup tackle to cornelius lucas you have Charles Leno and Samuel Cosme as your starting tackles. Then you have Cornelius Lucas as your direct backup tackle if there's an injury to either the left or the right side. And then technically, I believe Sadiq Charles is right behind him. So now Sadiq Charles is your backup swing tackle. And in practices, he's now your starting left or right tackle with the second teams going against the second team defense and things like that. So that means he's going to get a lot of snaps. But even just going back to the center position, now that Wes Schweitzer has technically moved from guard to center, and you already have Trey Turner and in Norwell starting at guard so now we have three guards starting an interior offense alignment technically two centers out that means Chris Paul and maybe even technically Sadiq Charles are your direct backup guards and that's why Sadiq Charles I want to see more out of him but I'm still happy to have him because he's technically your backup for both tackle and both guard positions if you really need it but again I think this is going to be a great opportunity for Chris Paul to show that he can do a lot of people are really high on him I'm high on him as well but you have guys that have no attachments to the Washington Commanders I mean just straight pure neutral draft analysts that love Chris Paul and felt like he was still in the seventh round and now with all of these injuries he's going to have a great opportunity plenty of chances plenty of snaps especially Especially in training camp and preseason to show that he at the very least deserves to be on this roster as some guard depth but this also means guys like Bo Benchwell and Nolan Laufenberg Tyrese Robinson and Shaq Calhoun again everybody moves up on the depth chart so now they're gonna get more snaps and more opportunities to show that they deserve to make this roster everybody moves up now granted I think Chris Paul is going to be the guy that takes the most advantage of it because out of all the backups again Chris Paul Bo Benchwild Nolan Laufenberg Tyrese Robinson and Shaq Calhoun I definitely like Chris Paul the most easily and if you want to throw Sadiq Charles in there I like him maybe a little bit more than Chris Paul as of right now but we'll see Chris Paul's potential may make him a better backup guard than Sadiq Charles is and then tight end fairly obvious but with Logan Thomas out John Bates is your best most refined blocker again pro football focus feels like he's the best blocking tight end already and that was just his rookie season last year and he didn't even really get to start like that until Logan Thomas started getting hurt so it wasn't even like he was a rookie and was starting day one right out the gate it was a very sporadic 
starting schedule for him last year and his snap counts were completely different game to game he would get a lot then he would get very little other games and when logan thomas was out he was able to become more of a part of the passing game but even when logan thomas was healthy john base was still a really good run blocker again i feel like he is a great run blocker already but pro football folk is already crowning him the best run blocking tight end I'm going to need to pause on that just a little bit, but we'll see, man. He definitely has the potential. So to me, he's automatically your number one tight end. First of all, because he's already proven that he can do it in NFL games. The way he was running Cowboys players over and his sure hands. Granted, he can't get open on his own, but only like three to five guys in the NFL can do that anyway. If that. So he's technically a tight end one with Logan Thomas out. Then you have Cole Turner, who I feel like has crazy receiving potential. Excluding the freak athletes like Samus Reyes, Armani Rogers, and Curtis Hodges, who have loads of receiving potential as well, but may be too raw for it to even matter yet. Outside of those guys, if we're talking Cole Turner, Logan Thomas, and John Bates, Cole Turner easily has the higher receiving potential ceiling. If we could just get him to learn how to block better, he can be another dual threat tight end that specializes more in the passing game, while John Bates is a dual threat tight end that specializes more in run blocking. Like I keep saying, Logan Thomas is a good blocker and a good receiver, but Cole Turner definitely has the potential to be a better receiver, and I feel like John Bates is already easily a better blocker than him. So I feel like we're in pretty good hands, but after those guys, again, with injuries, everybody moves up the depth chart. So now that John Bates is your tight end one, Cole Turner is your tight end two, and may end up surprising people and being one of Carson Wentz's favorite targets. Now that means Samus Reyes is your tight end three, and you have Armani Rogers, Curtis Hodges, and technically even Antonio Gandy Golden fighting for that fourth spot. And we'll see how many tight ends we end up keeping going to the 53 man roster to start the regular season. I hope that we keep as many as possible because, I mean, like I already said, I've been saying it for weeks now. And even my video, my most recent video that I just put out technically very early this morning, like 12 a.m., the tight end group is the most exciting group for me. I mean, it's just so much boom or bust, ridiculous athleticism and potential there that I want to keep as many guys as possible because no matter what, one or two of these guys that we may end up letting go is probably going to end up on another team that's willing to be more patient with them and take the time to develop them and watch them end up being a star. Watch Armani Rogers end up going to a random team like the Ravens being stowed away for like the next two, three years and out of nowhere comes back looking like Darren Waller. And People are like, where did he come from? And then we're gonna, everybody's going to look and be like, oh, the Washington Commanders had him first. They just released him. So I guess it's technically a good problem to have. We have so much talent in the tight end room. Granted, the vast majority of it is still very raw, but there's so much talent. It's a good problem to have that you're trying to figure out who you should keep and who you're going to be sad about letting go. Again, I'm not as high on Antonio Gandy Golden switch to tight end as a lot of y'all are, but he's also part of that equation as well. And now to what the pup list exactly is, and NBC Sports Washington worded it perfectly. First of all, pup list stands for physically unable to perform list. And it is for players who are carrying football related injuries entering training camp. Remember, Cornelius Lucas is non-football related. So I'm assuming he'll return out of nowhere. I don't exactly know what's going on there, but it's not football related. Players on the pup list are allowed to participate in meetings and use team facilities, but they cannot practice. There's no initial penalty for a player going on the pup list as they can be activated at any time during the preseason. However, once activated, they cannot be returned to the pup list. If a player remains on the pup list to begin the regular season, they then become ineligible to practice or play in games for at least the first four weeks. A player on the pup list counts towards the 90-man roster during the preseason, but not the 53-man roster during the regular season. So as of right now, all of these guys on the pup list are still part of the 90-man roster. Remember when I went through the ESPN roster for the Washington Commanders, there were 93 names. So three of those names got to go. Just because we put Chase Young, Tyler Larson, Logan Thomas, and Chase Roulier on the pup list, that does not open up four spots for the roster. Also, just like they said, the pup list is situated in a way that once you get on the pup list and you come off, you can't go back. So you have to make sure your guys are fully healthy and ready to go when you bring them off the pup list because they cannot go back again. And like I just said, 
they do count towards the 90 man roster but when you get to the regular season and you're down to the 53 man roster the pub list players do not count towards the 53 man roster they are a separate list but if you're on the pub list to enter the regular season you have to miss at least four games and not only can you not play in those games but you cannot practice as well but again you can attend team meetings and you can use the team's facilities moving on to the team stuff josh gerbin reported it first the commanders filed a trademark application july 20th to have their entertainment team be named the command force and that's including the cheerleading squad now i don't know how much i like that name for anything but it's for something so separate that's technically outside of football and what's actually going on with the product on the field on sundays that it's not really my concern it's not really my business but i wanted to update y'all on that also the part that y'all probably care more about is that a fan vote will decide the commander's new fight song which is a slightly revised version of the franchise's original song there's very little changes honestly the biggest change besides the new name is that it goes from braves on the warpath to either fight for our commanders or leaders on a mission so that's what we get the vote on so here are your two options the complete breakdown here's song one and here's song two and of course you could pause this video if you really want to actually like read it and sing it and everything of course going from redskins to commanders that's an extra syllable so the way you got to say hell to the commanders like it's kind of different <laughs> and then even if you go to their website they actually have a voice recording of several people singing it at the same time so you can hear an example i thought that was pretty cool but for me i mean i don't really care about the fight song that much i know it's a part of our history and all of that but i mean i was never like a big fan of the way it sounds i would like a more modern version but i highly doubt that i will ever get a version of the song that i want but i'm very happy for those of y'all that actually do care about the fight song that they are updating it and you get a chance to vote on a part of it so those are your two song options make sure y'all go vote when you can and now moving on to very random news first of all chris harris jr the corner reportedly garnered interest from multiple teams and a source close to the situation believes that chris harris and the commanders have mutual interests he's 33 years old and if we want a solid veteran option that may not start chris harris is out there so definitely get in the comment section let me know how y'all feel about the potential of us adding chris harris to our cornerback group it's actually pretty thin i mean an injury or two and now our secondary is looking real scary i'm not gonna lie same thing with the linebacker group moving on madden came out with their quarterback ratings since the last time i talked about madden ratings and carson Wentz is a 73 below justin fields below jalen hurts below tua below teddy bridgewater below trevor lawrence below Jameis winston below jimmy g below baker mayfield mac jones and of course he's below kirk cousins and matt ryan i'm not surprised about those and he's above zach wilson jared Goff, trey lance davis mills and daniel jones but golly man they have him 27 27 out of nfl quarterbacks i think that's absolutely ridiculous i can't wait for him to go out there and ball out and make everybody else look stupid and then speaking of madden quarterback ratings for the rookie quarterbacks is very close you have desmond ritter as the one with the highest rating with the 70 overall then you have malik willis second with the 69 then you have kenny pickett and matt corral tied with a 68 overall and then you have sam house with the 67 overall also hayden winks tweeted out his camp prediction is that running back antonio gibson emerges as the most talked about offensive player in camp he said the espn notes he's dropped his body fat from 18 percent to less than 12 percent to add explosiveness meanwhile his underdog fantasy adp has gone from 47 to 72nd overall and i feel like brian robinson has a lot to do with that but it is kind of funny that he was one of only seven running backs to rush for 1,000 yards last year and his madden rating went down like a point or two so i don't know why people don't necessarily believe in Antonio Gibson I can understand fantasy wise with us drafting Brian Robinson why you'd be a little hesitant but his Madden rating and people expecting him to not be as good as he was last year I'm confused I feel like if anything he's only going to get better especially if he can protect the ball and I'm not saying that Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson will be this pairing but it would be great if we can get a Mark Ingram Alvin Kamara type situation out of those two but I feel like it may end up being something closer to what ron rivera had in his first year in carolina but i'm really hoping it's more so a mark ingram alvin kamara thing because i really want antonio gibson to basically be what cordell patterson was for the falcons last year if we can do that 
Also, shouts out to George Carmi on Twitter at GCarmi21. He tweeted, didn't realize this current cycle of mediocrity the commanders have been in. Guess it makes sense when reflecting on the Gruden and Cousins era. Washington needs to get over the hump. And when you look, 2021, we went 7-10. 2020, we went 7-9. 2019, 3-13. 2018, 7-9. 2017, 7-9. 2016, 8-7. And, and 2015, 9-7. Like I've said several times, if y'all know me by now, y'all know the worst thing in sports to me is to be perpetually average especially in the nfl college is different because there's no draft and you just got to get it out the mud through recruiting and now apparently the transfer portal which a lot of people are not playing with i wish georgia was on it more but in the nfl perpetually average man I, I can't stand it i can't stand having like an average quarterback and accepting that as your future and now you're just basically just one of those middle tier teams and i'm assuming your main focus is to sell tickets and not win a super bowl at that point point. and then lastly the commanders announced that tyree reed jr is their 2022 Doug Williams coach and fellow and will join the staff as an offensive assistant, working primarily with the quarterbacks. Reed is a Baltimore native and former Bowie State quarterback who returned to his alma mater as a coach. Remember, I reported a while ago that they were doing a Doug's William coaching fellowship to allow minorities to get an opportunity that they normally wouldn't be afforded. And so that's dope. They finally announced the winner of it. And again, it is Tyree Reed Jr. from Baltimore. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please leave a like if you liked it, if you learned anything. And of course, man, I appreciate all the support, man. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors, whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now. Again, make sure y'all pull up every week to the friday night live stream and every week to the sunday evening live stream and also make sure y'all stay tuned for all of the training camp updates every day that there's a practice i'm gonna talk about something we got to talk about what was good and what was bad offense defense specific players specific position groups injuries all of that type of stuff so make sure y'all stay tuned for all of the training camp stuff because i got y'all and i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out